Okay, here we go. Yeah. Oh, Dave Perry, you joker, you. Yeah. Talk about talk about commercialization on top of commercialization. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get any more commercial than this, does it? Cool spot on the Super NES. I guess you could say this is the definitive version of Cool Spot. Although, that's actually an interesting... That's, a, that's an interesting discussion. This game was actually released on the Sega Genesis, the Game Boy, I believe it came out on the Game Gear. It was an Amiga game for some time, as I recall. I want to do normal mode. Uh, this game was developed by Dave Perry and the boys and girls over at... I don't remember what they were called. But eventually they split off and became shiny. These are the guys who worked on the Sega Genesis version, the Sega Genesis Mega Drive version of Disney's Aladdin that everyone loves so much that I've never played. They did the Jungle Book, they did, I believe they did the Lion King game as well. And they also did this. Well, this game is rated a C for commercialism. And capitalism and cross-promotional, cross <laughs> whatever you want to call it. What, what, what? Oh, I screwed that up. Basics. This game is Contra. Eight directional, eight directional firing control, and a jump button. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed that. That's pretty much all I need to know to play this game. There we go. I am taking the high road to see if I can get these cool points, because this game has a completionist uh, achievement, I guess you could say. Because if you get all the cool points in a level, I guess, I think the game rewards you with an extra life or something. I don't even remember anymore. I, I rented this game on launch. And, well, I... I want to say I got to, like, the train level, or maybe one level after that. Whoops! I want to say I got to the train level and one level after that, but... I know I never finished it, and frankly, I lost interest at that point anyway. Ah, 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 ah. No, you don't. Ah, ah, I'm good, I'm good. Ah, ah, whoa, whoa, whoa! I screwed that up. There's a time limit over there on the top right-hand corner of the screen, so fair warning. You can't spend too much time dilly-dallying. You can't sit there and admire the parallax scrolling, because this game... This game has a lot of problems, but it does not lack for charisma in terms of the art. It actually has very, very good art. Very good pixel art. I mean, look at that Look at that beach background back there. I mean, obviously, it looks a little bit better than the Genesis version, because they have a bit more color in it. But detail in these levels is actually very, very good. Uh, that crab, okay, it's not well animated, but the spot's reasonably well animated. Love his tumbling jumps. Always loved his tumbling jumps. But again, the art here is very, very good for what it is. It's not trying to be too cartoony, believe it or not. It's actually trying to be somewhat realistic, which I can kind of kind of appreciate. It's got shades of gray, which I kind of like in some of these cartoon games. I like de I like a little bit of extra detail in these cartoony games. If you can't do that, obviously you can do the anime thing, but this works out pretty well, I think. The soundtrack, which you can't, which I'll splice in later, is by a dude named Tommy Tallarico, which I'm sure a lot of Genesis fans know. He did the soundtrack to the Terminator Sega CD game, Skeleton Warriors on the PlayStation, and the Saturn, the Red Book soundtrack, basically. Dude, I think he did most of Shiny's games. Like, I think he did uh, Earthworm Jim. Yeah, I believe he did do Earthworm Jim. Yeah, he did do Earthworm Jim. Okay, I can't go low. That ah, crap! Ah, did it again. I probably don't even need to collect all of these. I'm just messing around. You can't crouch and shoot, by the way. Well, you can't... See, you can't crouch and shoot, by the way. You can only shoot downward, which is... <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the animation for that. But you just... You know how he... You know how the animation works. He just kind of flicks his wrist, and he ends up firing this cool spot. There's no, there's no rapid fire. There, there's no, uh... Auto fire in this game, which kind of sucks. So look, look at that Walkman. That's a pretty good Walkman. Not great, but it's a pretty good Walkman design. I think they were allowed to call it a Walkman, because they had to just call it a Walk Spot. <laughs> oh well. Okay, let's see if we can go any higher. If you're wondering why I'm doing this, I'm just... Again, it's been a while since I played this game. I just want to see how, far, how long I can keep the high road, low road thing going. It's an interesting bit of game design I've always wanted to do myself, is... Give people, it's like in Mario, you know, you, 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 you know, you get the rack, you get the Tanuki suit, and you fly up to the clouds, and you get some extra one-ups. I'm always sort of curious what sort of challenges await if you take an alternate path. Here you go. Oh, do I need to shoot it? 
Oh crap, I need to shoot it. Just a second. Can I make my way back up here? Yeah, I think I can. Darn it. Can't make that jump. Or that one. Ah, it! Man, I died. Where's the um, life meter? So the so I've gotten 64% of the cool points on this level. So we can see that on the top left hand side of the screen. Oh, by the way, uh, there's no there's an auto run feature in this game. You walk slowly at first, and then after you get ahead of steam, then you get a bit of momentum and you start walking more quickly. So there's no run button in this game. It's just auto run. So keep that in mind. If you're speed running, the idea is how long can you keep your momentum going? Because unfortunately, it's kind of hard to kind of hard to determine. It's kind of hard to determine exactly when you get full speed. Unlike Mario, where you can run on command, which is a lot more, which is a lot more reasonable, I think. And of course, you have games like Mega Man X, you have double tapping and things like that, which make running a lot easier. There is no double tap in this game. See? So you can't double tap run. You can't use the L or R buttons for anything. In fact, the only thing the R buttons for is for being stationary. So it makes it easier for you to aim and shoot. You can hold you can hold up or down on the D-pad to look up or down, which you might have to do on occasion. You can also, like I said, hold down the R button to stay stationary and look at kind of peak left to the left or right. But like a lot of Dave Perry's games, there always seems to be a scrolling problem. Like the screen always seems to scroll a bit too much. It's kind of weird. It jerks around a lot. Maybe it's because he likes the pacing of his games when the screen scrolls really quickly, but it's just kind of weird. There's my one up. My 7-Up, excuse me. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, the cool points you can see right there, 72% means I've collected 72% of the little red spots on the on the level. But uh, my little icon next to the number 2, I have two lives left. It peels off as I take damage, which I wasn't paying attention to last time. So if it looks like my red spot's about to fall off, it's like a sticker. And if it looks like it's about to fall off the screen, that means I'm almost dead. Which is a cute little visual health indicator, but it's not very useful in a pinch, to be honest with you. Oh, you probably saw that little spark right there. Yeah, see that? There are hidden spots in the environment. So if you see a little spark, like right, like right here. See these little sparks right here? See, I'm collecting spots down here. So they're all hidden. That's how the game lets you know you've actually collected something. That's how hard it is to get 100% in this game, I guess. Whoops. So my, uh, my sticker icon there on the top left-hand corner of the screen, it's not full strength. It's starting to peel off a tiny bit because I took a hit there. Personally, I would just prefer, like, what if there were, like, four or five spots? Like, what if there were, like, like a, like a, five, like a, like on a, like a card, you know what I mean? Like a little five spot to represent, there's a checkpoint, to represent my level, represent my health. Like, a, like a, something that's more discreet and easier to, easier to read than that. So again, it's cute, but I just kind of wish they did something more traditional for a health meter. Even if it's just like five or six dots, like on a, like on a die. You know what I mean? Six dots on die. Perfect. I think I can reach this guy. Okay, so I'll just hold the R button and aim diagonally. The control in this game actually isn't too bad in terms of, you know, precision, you know. Whoop, I got the bonus. So I collect 89 or 88 red spots, that means I get to earn the bonus level, which is that funky music that plays during... You're inside the little 7-up bottle and you collect spots to get a 1-up. So that's one excuse to explore in this game, is to collect spots, even though there's not much of a challenge so far other than just, you know, platforming like this. So I might be able to get 100%, but the only challenge here is just the platforming. You're not actually shooting anything. There's no real puzzles, it's just, you know, precision platforming. Which, again, in this game actually isn't that bad. There we go. See? Problem solved. Only got 93% though, so there must have been some hidden spots around there that I missed. Now this music, I'll use time bonus, so I might get a 1-up if I speed run this level, see? And I got a coolness bonus. Okay, so I did get the 1-up there. Now here's the funky music. This soundtrack is actually kind of a mixed bag in the highest order. The music in the level we just heard was terrible. In fact, half the music in this game is just awful. But this is some very good music here. Fucking oh, quiet. I'm also on a time limit, as you can probably tell. That. 
Need a bonus level. Hmm. I can aim my fall. There we go. More time. Time, by the way. How do I get that stupid thing up top? Probably need to hit. I probably need to hit it from an angle. I probably need to go up higher and then just fall down on it. Burn it. There we go. It's a bit of a maze. <laughs> I'm running out of time here, so I'll probably get 70. There we go. Got it. Yeah, okay, give me a bit more time. Literally. I can't hit it. Hold on, look at that. I don't know if I made it this high before. Darn it! Ah, ah. Okay, fine. Good enough. Let's get two of these. And I missed it. Okay, one more? Nope. <laughs> See? Good music and graphics on that level. So again, give Dave Perry and the boys some credit. They did a real good job in the art in this game. Some of the animation right there is a nice touch. So, you know, these guys aren't bad. Again, the level design isn't great, but hey. <laughs> the game has some qualities. It has a tiny bit of charisma. A bit more charisma than you might have expected. This music's pretty good too, actually. Got a little jazz going on in the soundtrack. See, Super NES Jazz is kind of, I want to say it's great, but it's kind of underrated. <laughs> this is where things get a bit more interesting, because it's kind of hard to determine where the platforms are and where the enemies are and what you can land on, so it's kind of weird. See, okay, see that red icon up there? I'm peeling off, the, my, my sticker is peeling off the screen there, so I don't want to take too much more in terms of damage. Again, it's not a great visual indicator, but it gives you some idea about how close to death you are. Not precise, but it works. I guess I can hold the R button here to stay on this rope, stationary, so I can shoot at those worms. Yeah, these are your enemies. It's shooting at worms. Okay, so I'm able to... So I, am, I am able to jump on this nail, which is good. Because I can't go up here. I have to go up those ropes. So how do I get up the ropes? Did I get them? See, the screen doesn't seem to scroll enough, and that's kind of a problem. Oh, crap! Maybe I can use a diagonal. Let me use a diagonal attack. See, I can make this work. Whatever you gotta do. That, okay. And I can't jump on the knots. I can't climb the knots. So the knots in this rope are gonna be a problem. No, I don't, I don't know what kind of knots those... I don't know what kind of knots those uh, things are. It's not that kind of educational channel. I guess in the annals of commercial pop products, literally pop, this is literally a pop, this is literally pop art, right? <laughs> like, soda pop. Uh, yeah, so that's gonna be the name of this video. Researching soda pop art. Because basically, like Linus the Lionhearted and some of those old, like, commercial products back in the day, like He-Man and the such, you know, it's pop art. Commercialization. That has some artistic merit, to be fair. Not so much like Andy Warhol, though I think this I think this might fall into the category of Campbell's soup cans in terms of pop art. Though for the people who say that video games are art or can be art, okay, I agree with you, but this is probably not what you meant. 
Although there is art in this game. Like, like the graphics here. You can, if you were to replace the, uh, if you were to replace this commercial character, because remember, I think this is the only character in the game that's really commercial. The icons are commercialized, obviously, at the 7-Up container. But you can easily reskin this game to make it less commercial. Actually, it would still be commercial, it just wouldn't be a commercial for Soda Pop, because let's be brutally honest here. The product being pushed has nothing to do with the game. Yeah, it's refreshing, I guess. You know, I guess the soda pop you collect is supposed to refresh your health, which is obviously BS. I mean, we know how that works. But the bees here and the worms and all that, you know, there's no commentary being made on the product like that. There's no commentary in the actual level design either. Look at that fish. Fish is sitting right there in the puddle of water. That's kind of weird. <laughs> like I said, you know, somewhat interesting art they got going on in this game. Interesting characters, too. Although the enemies are actually kind of, you know, kind of... Meh. They're somewhat well animated, but like I said, the worms and stuff here, it's like, they're very, there isn't a whole lot of personality. I mean, a bit, a bit later, you'll see a mouse in a wall that kind of throws, you know, rocks at you or something. And it's well animated, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's very generic. There are very generic enemies here. So, maybe if the game were willing to commit to the bit... It actually add, you know, bit characters with a bit more, you know, merit in terms of their art. <laughs> no, not be so generic. Maybe, like, maybe if you fought, like, Blue... Well, it may, like, okay, this might be too much commentary. What if you were fighting, like, Blue Spots instead of Red Spots? Or Green Spots, you know what I mean? It could be, like, a color thing. I don't know. <laughs> that brings up colorism. We don't want to talk about that. But what about, like, what could you add to this game to make the enemies less generic? Because you can't use other soda pop brands, or probably rules against that. And I'm pretty sure, was it, is it Pepsi? Was it, no, it's Dr. Pepper. It's the Dr. Pepper product. Another soda I hate. Yeah. If it were up to me, everyone would be drinking, like, you know, lemonade with... Everyone would be drinking seltzer water with lemonade, I guess. Actually, you could probably just drink orange juice. <laughs> yeah, get yourself some orange juice, you'll be fine. Maybe some, uh... Maybe some carrot juice. That goes a pretty long way. And, and, in fact, it's summertime. In fact, this is, this is your public service announcement. Never drink soda in the summertime. Just don't. It's too much sugar, and the carbonation actually makes you thirstier. So just don't. <laughs> okay? So that's, so that's my uh, counterpoint to all the commercialism you're seeing. Whoop, I couldn't see that fish hook. If I could see, I, just didn't, I didn't know it was an obstacle. I mean, I know these pointy, uh, <laughs> I know these pointy, you know, urchins or whatever are obstacles. But that's a minor problem with this game. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell what you're supposed to avoid and what, you, what you're supposed to... Whoops. What are you supposed to avoid and what are you supposed to, uh, you know, jump on? Whoops. Get the B! That! That! He got me! That! I'm not dead! At least I hit the, uh, checkpoint. But that thing, which apparently saves all the cool points I collected so far. I just don't, I just don't remember what cool points collected I've... I just don't remember what cool points I've collected up to this point. So I'm gonna have to go back and recollect them. Now, apparently this clam only takes damage when its, when its shell is open. Which makes sense, actually. Yeah, I think, again, I think this is the perfect example of a rental. I mean, it's a game that you buy for kids because it's kind of harmless. Despite the fact that it's selling them, you know, junk food. We're not gonna talk about that yet. I mean, yeah, this is a game about selling junk food, but it has merit as a video game because the control is not bad, the art is very good, the music has some, the music has some high points, the platforming is reasonably precise, far more precise than a lot of Shinies games, actually. It's like Dave Perry kind of got the idea that's like, okay, we're not going to make this, you know, incredibly fast-paced action game that's almost pretty much like a roller coaster. We're going to make the control a lot less slippery. Like, Earthworm Jim had that problem. Had a really slippery control. It's gonna be hard to hit. Okay, I got it. Just had to mash on the attack button to get some DPS going on. <laughs> you know, damage per second. Is that a one-up? Nope, just more cool. So I guess it, gets, it just gives me, what, 20% more cool points, something like that? Because if you saw my percentage sign, the cool percent went up by several, by about a double-digit amount by collecting that 7-up. So yeah. <laughs> Just reinforcing the point, reinforcing a theme. <laughs> which isn't to say this game, which isn't to say 7-Up is actually worth eating or anything. Or actually worth consuming or anything. <laughs> this game is probably the equivalent of those Arby's, uh, 
those Arby's ads on Facebook. They just, you know, they combine one kind of commercial icon with another. It's like putting lipstick on a pig. Because don't get me started on Arby's garbage food. Do I guess some people like their curly fries? I don't know. Because every time I see an Arby's ad, my immediate response is, "You're literally putting lipstick on a pig." And you're and, and look, I, I I get I get I get that reference. You know, I'm like Captain America. I get that reference, but come on with that nonsense. <laughs> You can, you can put, you know, you know, you can put, you know, Naruto's headband on a Big Mac. It's not going to make it taste better. But, you know, attention dollars. You know how it is. Yeah, you can put Chun Li, you can put Chun Li, you can slather Chun Li on some, on some chili fries. I'm not going to want to eat them. Either of them. But the point is, is that when you start combining these things, just for the sake of combining them, like combining brands, like in like in that uh, Kamikaze Girls movie, where they were like putting Disney and Versace on a T-shirt. I'm like, Disney has nothing to do with Versace, well, except for you know brand icons, right? Actually, that reminds me, is this does this red spot have a uh, have red soles? Because apparently that's copyrighted now, or it's trademarked now. The color of your shoes is now is now trademarked. I. I I'm astonished that's a thing. It's apparently, it apparently applies for other things, but it's bizarre. Like, imagine if someone trademarked, you know, the color of a car. Or specifically, like, some people compared it to a hood ornament, and I'm like, no, no. Hood ornaments are ornamental. Sh soles are an essential part of the shoe. So I guess painting the, painting, like, it's like painting the shoelaces and calling the shoelaces and trademarking the shoelaces. God darn it. No dead. So, I'm not down with that, but that's another issue entirely. No one's watching this video to hear me talk about the trademark law. Because I'm not a lawyer. Though I do, as this, as this channel proves, I'm perfectly willing to repurpose other people's material for non-profit purposes. Because these videos aren't monetized, unlike this game. Although at this point... <laughs> at this point, I don't even think you could re-release this game. This might, this might be one of those... Uh, this, this might be one of those IP prisons. You know, like those Dungeons and Dragons games that people don't seem to be able to re-release, can't seem to re-release. You see that? I think there's like, I think there might be 16 degrees of aiming on this. You see that? You're not just aiming diagonally, you're aiming diagonally at an angle. Like you can, it's not just north, south, east, and west and the minor points in between. I think you can also go north, northeast, and east, northeast. It's a pretty interesting way to aim in this game. Of course, there's no analog. There's no analog aiming in this game, so that makes it a bit more interesting. But yeah, that's pretty interesting. They got a few extra points of precision in terms of this firing. That's surprisingly, that's surprisingly uh, nuanced for a Dave Perry game. <laughs> you actually have nuance in the play control. I wasn't expecting that. So again, as far as platform precision platforming goes, this game actually isn't bad. Precision shooting. It's just too bad the level design isn't doesn't make good use out of it. It's just a bunch of this. You're not really exploring. I mean, you can't get lost, which I think is good, but... And the game actually is constantly pointing you in the right direction, so that helps. But, really, as a jump in, as a, you know, as a platform shooter, you know, it's kind of meh. You know, it's the opposite of Contra in that sense, where, you know, where most of the aliens were somewhat, you know, well-designed. It's the opposite of that. You get enemies like those dumb bees, which are annoying as crap. Okay, so I got 60% of the points. 60% of the cool spots. So that means that I can find the cage and free my boy. These are all boys, I believe. Although, they're no gender signifiers. Uh, I, I guess we could call cool spot... A, we could call cool spot female. I mean, <laughs> again, there's no <laughs> indication otherwise, right? Okay, I can stay down here. Let me aim up. Yeah, let me... Yeah, jump and an aim. Yeah, I can do that. See? That's how you get past those guys. You can get a good angle on them. There we go! Some hidden spots in that... In that rotten wood. I should be near the end here. This, these levels are actually kind of too long for their own good, actually. <laughs> Again, you can't get lost, but they just seem kind of... Seem kind of interminable. Again, you could speedrun, it's just... There's no wall jumping in this game, just in case you're wondering. 
And again, you can't scroll high enough to shoot the worms that are here, which is kind of annoying. Okay, where are we at? There we go. Let me get that one. I can't get the bonus stage, though. So there might have been a bunch of spots inside the rotting wood. So I guess what I could do is... Yeah, can, yeah let me hunt for some more uh, spots. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm all dead. Let me hunt inside the wood for some more spots. I'll just ignore the arrows to see what I can find. So again, this song's kind of middle of the road, but it's okay as jazz music goes on the Super NES. I mean, if you want a real, if you want good jazz music, you know, maybe you know, listen, listen to listen to some Claymates. Uh, has some pretty good jazz music in it. Secret of Man has some surprisingly dope jazz music in it. So Super NES jazz actually isn't too bad. Uh, Spider-Man and the X-Men has some pretty good jazz music in it. Tim Fallon got a little uh, swing jazz in there, which is kind of interesting. Where are the spots? I got plenty of time left. I just gotta find this. Whoops! Well, screwed that up. Okay, so I have, I have all my spots back, so I just need to see if I can find any more as I head back to the thing. That was annoying. Took a cheap hit. I think I took a cheap hit there. Yep, I got the fish. Yeah. I don't think there's any more spots in the rotting wood over there. I don't see any rotting wood over there that I can actually walk into. Okay, we're good. These bees are really annoying. Insert your bees memes here. Ah, crap. I wonder how the Genesis did this whole stationary thing, because obviously, I mean, maybe this game was compatible with the six-button Genesis controller, I don't know. So you saw me aim that, right? So, that gives you some idea about how much articulation there is in the shooting. It's not just diagonally, it's the points in between the in-between points. So it might be 12. There might be 12 points on a... There might be 12 degrees of aim instead of just 8. But of course, they cheat by making you switch between, you know... 3 o'clock, and like you can shoot 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock, but the, but you, let me put it this way, you can shoot 3 o'clock and 1 o'clock like that, but you have to swing your thumb from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock in order to get 1 o'clock, you know what I mean? So it's an interesting way of doing that. It's not like a flamethrower in like Contra, you can just kind of sweep the flame back and forth. You kind of sweep the tongue of the flamethrower back and forth. It's not like that. But I'm glad they put it in there. Because it helps the shooting. And it's such, a, it's such a small thing, so I'm glad they added that. Because not a lot of these games, not a lot of games like this have, you know, 12 degrees of aiming when you shoot. So I'm glad this game does. Can I hit that nail? There's no more wood for me to... So I can't get any more cool points. I might have missed them all. Yeah, I might have missed... Maybe I missed a 7-Up uh, bottle around here. That might have given me a few more cool points. So I got these already. So I'm done. So I can't go to the bonus stage, which is fine. So maybe all the cool points that I missed are at the, are at the beginning of the stage. And again, again, this is annoying because you can't always see the worms. So, you know, Dennis Rodman. So you can't always see the... Uh, there we go. Can I... Can I shoot sideways and climb? No, I can't. So I guess all I can do is just hold the R button. Okay. So I can't get I can't get the 88% that I need to get to the bonus stage, but only I, and I only have one life left. So hopefully my time bonus will give me an extra life right here. And then the cool points will give me one more bonus. So I get a tiny amount of uh I get a tiny amount of lift because of my time. But I get a lot of lift based on my cool percentage up there. So that's how I get the one of. That's how I get the one of. Now this music's actually very good, so this might be the best song in the game. Forget the background, it's not meaningful. Because we're not going anywhere near the beach. See, again, it's like Tommy Tallarico had, like, a demo reel, where it's like, his really good music was, and he used the music from his demo reel here, and everything else is just filler. Like, he tried to do the Magnificent Seven soundtrack, and he tried to do a bunch of stuff, and a lot of the other... He tried to do some surf music, it wasn't very good. But he did this. 
you do the hang ten thing, it looks like it was like that. But this is very good. I want to say this is an original song. So credit where credit's due to him. I'll check on that. Back. Just look at that mouse down there. It's a somewhat, that's a well animated mouse, but it's very generic. So these enemies have, and it's in pajamas, which is kind of cute, I guess. But it's, it feels like, you know, it feel, it's kind of like that, uh, that gumball show. Whoops! <laughs> Went the wrong way. That can spring you forward if you jump off from the other side. But it's like that gumball show. They take bits and pieces of characters from other, um, they take, re they reuse, uh, character designs and art assets from other products they worked on, and they just kind of repurpose them. But unfortunately, the characters here don't have nearly as much personality as the ones in Gumball. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a weak repurposing effort, frankly. So I'm disappointed in that. We'll see, okay, well, one's gray and one's brown. Other than that, there's nothing special about them. Whoops. Hold on. I'm trying to aim. There we go. I needed that. Needed the soda for my health, am I right? Yeah, see, I'm trying to get, again, I'm trying to, you remember, I'm trying to hit him at 5 o'clock. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to aim that. Because the game leans towards aiming at 4 o'clock, but I hit him, but I was able to hit the point in between, so. It gives you some idea about how the aiming works. How precise you can be, depending on where you actually start shooting. Yeah, this is going to propel me forward. Give me a second. See? <laughs> see, that's kind of cute. I think it's, it didn't just propel me upward, but that's okay. That crap. Well, after this, the game goes downhill anyway, so it gets harder, but not necessarily more fun. And the music gets a lot worse, so... This is as good as the game's gonna get. That, that crap! I'm gonna die. Okay, so I got the mouse. Did I hit him? Okay, I got him, I got him. Because I can't get that, because on the other side of the wall... That, that! Yeah, see? See how precise I had to be there? There's a bit of nuance to this game. I wasn't expecting that. There's a bit of nuance to the shooting controls here. I, that part I don't remember at all, despite having played this game about two decades ago. <laughs> These spiders are annoying because there's no hidden spots around here. But I have to avoid the nails and the barbed wire, so it's kind of hard to hit. But see, you know, they got these... They got these keys here. They're reasonably well-drawn, reasonably well-shaped. So again, the pixel art in this game is actually pretty good. Much better than that Tom and Jerry game. Remember that thing? How am I supposed to get those? Just a second. Do I have to take the hit to get those? Because I don't want to die, so I don't want to get those. So let me not do that. Doink! <laughs> That's how you do it. There's some hidden coins here. Okay, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, let me go down. Ah! You gotta hold the R button to get this precise, uh aiming down, so worth it in that sense. I already came this way. Just a second. Up. Okay, so I went the wrong way. So let me see if I can get a whoops! Took another hit. Because that's the only way to get those. So if there's a 7-up around here, I can grab those and heal myself. Leaky pipes. See, again, the, the cloth there around the pipe, you know, nice touch. Well drawn. Stuff like that. You know, you can appreciate that. Gotta appreciate good pixel art these days. Especially these days. And every, of course, we're pretty much in the 32-bit era of polygonal graphics anyway, so... Your average 3D game looks better than this. But there was a time where the PS1... Where your average, you know, 3D PS1 game looked worse than this. Because everything was trying to be like... First-generation polygonal graphics just looked awful. You know, N64 games and such. N64 games look terrible compared to this. But I'm not going to say this is the pinnacle of 16-bit art, though. I mean, you got to go to Actraiser for stuff like that. You know, Actraiser 2 and... What is it? I keep talking about Actraiser 2 and Axelay, but yeah, they're pretty much the standard that I set. There's another Genesis game that I'm forgetting. They might, they might compare as well, too, but... I'll go back and check. Shinobi 3 was okay. That was pretty good. But yeah, for 16-bit graphics, you know, bet... Ah! What the heck was that? That was cheap. So yeah, like Batman Returns, well, well, most of the Batman Returns levels. Like the 2D levels looked, I mean the 2D graphics had terrible, the 2D level, the flat 2D levels had a terrible animation. 
but the but the final fight level, you know, the me the melee brawling level is a very good animation. So, so I guess another team took the same assets and decided to make some 2D platforming levels that were just awful. If I can get my hands on Batman Returns, I'll show you, but it's not a good game. It's a it's a good melee brawler, but unfortunately there's. Whoops! I should have I should have grabbed that before I got the soda. Can I curl around? Yeah, I made it. Wow, that was close. <laughs> See, I made it work. I got the spider. Are there any worms in this level? There are definitely spiders here. I thought there was something climbing these uh, green wires here. Like, what are these green wires anyway? They're not beanstalks, are they? But the game is somewhat consistent in terms of its scale, you know what I mean? Like, you're always smaller than a set of keys, like that. So that gives you some idea about the game's scale. So at least the art is consistent in that sense. That's the reason why you're bouncing off of bubbles. You're about the size of a 7-up spot on a 20-ounce bottle. <laughs> so I guess that's their logic. And it works. Took a tiny hit there, but I'm at 90, I'm at 80% health. I think I'm good. No, I think I can only take five hits, so I want to say I'm at 70, I'm at, I'm at yeah, I'm at 80% health. Because so I think it's that, there's like a, a smiling spot, and there's that spot, which means I've taken one hit, and then there are three more degrees of damage that I can see. But again, it's kind of hard to tell, the stupid visual indicator. Did I take a hit there? No, I didn't. Okay, so I'm fine. And by the way, that's Fizz. This cool spot is just Fizz. Hold on, gotta get my DVR going for the World Cup. That! And yes, Panama's already knocked out. They got killed by England. They scored their first goal, though. The first ever appearance in the World Cup, and they scored one goal before getting eliminated. <laughs> <sighs> Way to go, Panama. Look, I admit my bias. I'm a Canal Zone brat, so I admit my bias there. Watched my first ever episode of Transformers in Espanol. My first episode of She-Ra and Thundercats and Voltron were in Espanol. <laughs> because the American, tele the English language station didn't air those shows. So if you wanted to watch Super Friends and He-Man and She-Ra and Transor Z, you had to watch it in Espanol. So, all those shows you kids grew up watching in English, I had to watch in Spanish. Just saying. Respect. And I don't, I don't remember what the video game scene was like, because, you know, all the games I played were from uh, Canal Zone families. Who had, like, most of the, all the Atari games I owned. That Well, basically, we had maybe like six or seven Atari games on our VCS, and then our neighbors got rid of their... Atari 2600, and they gave us like five dozen games. Of course, they're probably only worth like, you know, 50 bucks total, because a lot of the games they gave us weren't that valuable. Like Chopper Command and Megalomania, those games weren't very expensive. I don't think those games were ever really worth much money, I'll double check. I think we just, I think, I think Ma literally just got rid of them. <laughs> because, I mean, I mean, she, I think she got rid of those games back in 95. I mean, I didn't play them anymore. I mean, I didn't care about the VCS back then. I was too busy playing stuff like this. Actually, I wasn't. Actually, I was playing Street Fighter. <laughs> like I was playing Street Fighter and Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. You know, I didn't. I didn't play Atari games. Like after I got my Super NES, you know. Like what was it? It was after the Atari Twenty Six Hundred was under fifty bucks. The fun is back and all that nonsense. You know, I was playing Midnight Magic and Desert Falcon. Desert Falcon sucked. By the way, we're not gonna talk about that. I already did a video on Desert Falcon. That game is garbage. At least on the Twenty Six Hundred. But the $50 Atari uh, 2600 was what I was playing before I got my NES. And then when I got that, I played a bunch of bases loaded, basically. So I had a bunch of videos on that, of course. A lot of Castlevania 2 and 3. Not a lot of Castlevania 1, though. I never owned that. A lot of, Me lot of Mega Man 2, which is why there's so many Mega Man 2 videos on this channel. Because I basically memorized it. I mean, I, I mainlined that game. I, <laughs> all the lines, all the lines you could possibly do on Mega Man 2, I did. I, could, I can't play it blindfolded, but I can pretty much do a deathless run if I really, really wanted to. But my videos were about me just kind of getting my bearings back. Cause I pretty much, and that pre, that game also proved that the lag on the Mega Man Legacy Collection on the PS, on the PS1 anyway. Excuse me, on the PC, they're no big deal. 
uh, I was able to get through the game with very little problem, with very few problems. So if there was a lag problem in that game, it didn't kill me, really. Even in Quick Man's levels. I was able to beat Quick Man's levels with the lasers, despite any lag I might have had, so I'm, I'm fine with that. Mega Man Legacy Collection's fine. At least based on Mega Man 2 it is. I don't know about the other games. I'll go back and play those later. A lot, a lot of low priorities for me. My backlog is ridiculous, but whoop, let me get that. Goes through the wall, so that's full health. Okay, never mind. I thought full health was, uh, was, uh, was just a regular spot where the glass, where the sunglasses weren't at an angle. But I guess it maintains a visual interest. It's not just a smiley, it's not just a smiley face. <laughs> it's, it's, the, the shades are at an angle, you know what I mean? Visual interest, am I right? Non-traditional vectors. You didn't come here to talk about art theory in a commercial video game about 7-Up, did you? Now, what? Oh, find the cage now. So I got some hidden spots there behind the pipes. Is it, are these pipes actually leaking? Because I, I don't think I've seen a single speck of water. No, I think there was one over there. But again, it's a nice touch. I'm curious how the Genesis version plays, but I want to say the game plays about the same as the as the Amiga version. I don't think the Amiga added a whole lot more to the game. Poland and Columbia. I have some brothers from the diaspora on this team. <laughs> Lots of brothers on this Colombian team with some dark complexion. I wasn't expecting that. Represent. It's like Brazil out there. <laughs> yeah, the diaspora definitely represents, though. Of course, like, of course, obviously, there's a lot of a lot of brothers from the African diaspora in uh, India. Uh, not India. Uh, Guyana. So I guess that makes sense. It's pretty close. See, this level's not so great, the music's not so great, but it's a lot of precision jumping. Whoops! And a lot of barely visible platforms at the bottom of this pool, so it's kind of annoying. It's a 2D, whoops! Like, it's a 2D thing. Hold on, so I can get that. There we go. See, precision platforming and shooting. It works. just have to be somewhat patient with it. Can I hit that thing? Because I don't think I'm supposed to hit the bottom of that pool. There it is. Okay, I had to use a tiny jump there. So again, the controls are very, very precise. So I gotta give the game some credit there. Whoops. Can I shoot this? I can shoot the spitty spit. I can shoot the spitties putting out my direction. Shoot the spit. Whoops. <laughs> See? Insta-death. That's where this game gets a lot less interesting. This is a very jazzy soundtrack. This is a very jazzy tune, too. It's just not very good. I think, I, think, I, think it's a, I think it's the next level, I forget. I can't hear the music here. But this level and the next level have a bit of jazz in them. This one's just a rub-a-dub song. It's not particularly good for him. <laughs> Like I said, this music is a mixed bag. Half the music's awesome, but half of it's not so great. <laughs> so you know it is. A lot of filler tunes. So you hear the oh, Alpha and the Omega Tommy Tallarico tunes in this game. But yep, very good graphics. Throughout, very good graphics. Even this... Well, wait! Got the bubble action going on. Whoops. Was expecting that. Oh, wait, wait! Good enough. So I guess it's the way I was supposed to go. Well, I, should, I, should I go down again? Darn it. Okay, whatever. Oh, I can't jump on the plane! That sucks. I'm just gonna avoid a bunch of cool spots, which might, which might, whoops, see? Ah, it's gonna be one of those levels. You have any continues? Did I collect to continue? Well, there are still continues in the normal level, right? Okay, yeah, that was my continue. Hallelujah. I'm going to spend an hour playing this game, and I'll never play it again, ever. But, you know, like I said, it's an example of a game where you can have, you can, this is an example, in fact, this is an example of a game where you can have very good music and very good graphics, very good art, very good control, precision control, for the most part. You know, 
This, the engine for this game is very, is very consistent. You know, getting 30 FPS pretty consistently. Again, the precision on the walking and the, the walking and the shooting is very, very good. You can hold down the R button for some very precise aiming, like I'm doing right here. You can go pixel by pixel in terms of the, you know, movement of your character, and that's very good. Whoops! Maybe too good. But the rest of the game is, again, the level design. This is where things get complicated, because it's an, if, you could, if you could ROM hack this, you should be able to ROM hack this into a much better game than what we got. Whoops! Look out for that guy. You're going to have to look at the spots on the wall. You're going to have to look at the spots in the background to kind of get your bearings so you know where to land. So keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, you see those pink spots? That's how you know where to, that's how you know where to aim. So you know where the platform is. You can look down like that by holding down the D-pad. Again, that's a very disturbing image right there. But, uh, where else are we going? Over here. But again, you can have good graphics and good level. You can have good graphics and good art, good audio visuals, good play control, and the game can just be boring. That's pretty much how I feel about this game. It's got a lot of qualities to it in terms of the audio visuals and in terms of the mechanics. But the level design's not there. Whoops! Took a shot there. I can shoot the spit in a second. Can I get that? Yes! Got it. If I can leave that hell. What the? Can I go over there? I yeah, I should be going up at some point. I can't get that. Okay, so that's so I can get that spot. So I can fall down, I can collect that spot from a high point and then fall down and land on the duck. And I can jump out of that bubble. Oops, see? Okay, so that's, that guides me down to a safe landing spot. So if I'm going for 100%, that's what I need. Can I get that? Okay, I got it. Now here's where the parallax scrolling makes things a lot harder because I don't know where to aim. See, I got that, okay, see? The parallax scrolling there makes that kind of a blind jump, so that's an example where the art doesn't help. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, mean, I can't go any higher, it looks like. You know, no spots collect up there. Whoops! So I needed to fall to the right to get that spot. Greed, the greed killed me. Let that be a lesson to you, kids. Greed kills. <laughs> Which is the opposite of what this game's trying to tell you, I guess. <laughs> This game is telling you drink seven up. Help us make help us make more money by selling sugar water to kids. Carbonated sugar water to kids. Anyway, there's your political commentary on a Sunday. Uh, hmm. Ah, uh, there we go. Yes, yeah, that's kind of a blind jump. I gotta aim that. Can I aim over here? Whoops! How did I not fall? I'm not complaining. Well, why did I not fall? <laughs> See, remember I had to use the pink spots up here to aim my landing, so it's kind of a blind jump. Whoops! What happened there? <laughs> like I said, this is part of the game just sucks. Like I said, I, I made it to the train level after this, but it was just... It, it, there was just no reason for me to really spend any time on that. And this is the normal difficulty level. There's a harder difficulty level after this, but I want to say it only affects how many cool spots you have to collect before you can advance to the cage. Like, I think on this level you have to collect 60%. I want to say on the easy level you have to collect 50% in order to get the cage. And I think on the harder level you have to collect 70, something like that. And the bonus stage might require 90% instead of 85%, like on this level. I'll go back and check, I guess. I just can't be bothered, really. Because I'm really, this game is like, I'm playing it for the first time in two decades. I'm like, okay, I made it halfway through the game on my first playthrough. In an hour, I made it halfway through the game. This game cost $60 on launch. And I'm like, yeah, it's okay, I guess. Here's my checkpoint. I totally missed that the first time because these stupid flying saucers. Whoops! Back! Well, the checkpoint's not going to matter anymore because the man continues. See, I am dead. <laughs> yeah, don't. Yeah, just stay on the ground, son. You're dead. And the man continues. I don't have any more uncola continues. Gah! How did I collect those continues anyway? 
I think I think that's right. I think I found that inside the soda pop. Yeah, inside the, at the top of the soda pop, there was a U there. So I made it halfway through the game in an hour, and let me just do a quick check on something. I'm gonna fill up some time on this DVD. So yeah, I'm never gonna play this game again. Uh, let's do hard. We we'll start from the beginning because you know we love repetition. Repetition is the soul of gaming, am I right? Get good. Get good at repetition. This game is not hard, really. Like I said, I've gone through the first four levels with very little problem. Of course, that the level where I died and lost all my lives is the level where I... You know, it's, it's the level where I, uh... Had to deal with the insta-kills. Whoa! That wasn't on the normal difficulty level. <laughs> well, that's a wrinkle right there. So let me hold down the R button so I can aim for this thing. Let's see, what's it? Holy crap! Someone hit the difficulty switch on my Atari. <laughs> there he goes. That was a really crappy thing to do. <laughs> Thanks for nothing, Dave Perry. See, he's shooting at me. He's shooting at me. Screw that. What the heck is that? Oh, I shot, I shot the bubble. Shouldn't have done that. Yeah, don't shoot the bubble. <laughs> I didn't know you could actually shoot the bubbles. <laughs> That's bad news. See, look at that. Transparency effect. Are these transparency effects in the Genesis version? Well, they might be different color transparency. Look at that, see? Transparency effects on the balloons. That's a fantastic effect for pixel art. It's a fantastic pixel art effect. So you have little details like that. You know, it's great. So this game has a lot more personality than you might have expected, I guess. And like I said, so the game has some surprises mechanically. It has some surprises in terms of the nuance of the, you know, the aiming here. You know, there's a lot of precision in terms of the walking and the jumping. And the, like I said, holding down the R button for more precise aiming. Again, Nintendo Power would give this game a 4 out of 5 in every category. Maybe a 4, maybe four and a half out of 5 in every category. Maybe even theme and fun. They would look at a game like this and say, oh, it's so, it's so cartoony and non-violent and non-threatening. We're going to give this game a 4 out of 5 in theme and fun. Because Spot is fun. He's, a, he's, he's totally 90s, obviously. He's, he's a cool dude. This dude is totally... You can, this, game, this game is like that... Uh, what's that game about the kid from the, uh, the little black and white kid? What was that little black and white kid that was in the, um, was that, that was seven, yeah, Fido Dido. Remember him? From the, I think he was a 7-Up mascot, right? Fido Dido, the black and white character that sold soda. Fido Dido had a video game. You can't get more 90s than that. I mean, Cool Spot has Tood. This guy is all Tood. Tunes with Tude is what this is. And you know, every eight-year-old, every eight-year-old boy in America probably thought this guy was cool, which was the point of this game, which is the reason this game was exi exist in the first place. Because you might remember the Spot video game on the NES, which is what like an Othello clone, basically. And it's like, okay, who wants to play? I mean, I kind of want to play that now. But why would you want to play a freaking board game on the NES, right? When you can play this. Well, level design, you know, sucks, you know, the challenge is very much kind of Twitch-based, and... Again, maybe this is a shiny problem. Are Shiny's level designs really that good? Because obviously, you know, they can do, like, they can add personality to the game. Their artists are amazing. Tommy Tallarico is a very good music. When he's on point, he's on point. He does some very good music when he's on point. But the level, it's like, it's like Platinum Games. They have some good ideas, but it's like the level design's not there. But the problem with a lot of other Dave Perry games is that, you know, the play control, it's very slippery in a lot of his games. It's kind of hard. To, the hit detection's very hard to determine. These bees are killing me. These, these bees are coming from everywhere. They're dive-bombing me. But again, you know, it's like, you know, this, this is probably, in terms of, this game is mechanically probably the best shiny game Probably the best Dave Perry game he's ever made. Well, except for maybe Sacrifice. That's like an RTS, basically, right? I need to play that game. I got, I got that game on PC. That thing, that thing runs on a toaster. I need to play that game. That thing will probably run on a tablet. That thing will run on a win book. 
But yeah, this stuff, I mean, not a lot of great... Oh, made that. That was, a hard, that was a hard jump, but I made it. So, despite this game's, you know... Again, this is a game where you can objectively say it has a lot of good qualities. The audio-visuals are great. The precision platforming, the play control. You know, that, that, that funny term Nintendo Power used to use, play control. The play control of this game is actually very good. But the level design isn't that good. It's not that challenging. Until later, where it's just annoying. So this game is... Nah. It looks great. Like I said, objectively, this might be a case in point of how a game can look great and play great and just be boring as crap. That's right, I don't have enough cool spots to open the cage. So I have to backtrack now and collect more cool spots. Or cool points. So let's go back and collect more red dots. And we'll not, we'll not be making any naughty jokes about collecting red spots. How many of these? Oh, do I need 85? Because remember, on the normal difficulty level, I need to collect uh, 60. Do I need to collect all of them? I'm holding down the run button. There may be a bunch of red spots around here. There's not a lot of places they can hide on this level. They're probably in the chair, and that's it. Yeah, they're on the chair, and that's it. I didn't think I missed that many, but here we go. Bigger speed run. So yeah, there's not a whole lot to this game, and it's kind of unfortunate. I've spent an hour playing this game. Like I said, I'm never going to touch it. See, there we go. Still not, at the, still not at 85 yet. So there are 100 spots scattered throughout this level, so it becomes a collect-a-thon. <laughs> like, like ukulele or something. I mean, it's an easy way to explore, I guess. Here we go. A check I know there's a checkpoint on this level. There we go. And I got more time now, so I can be a time bonus. Which isn't as meaningful as my cool spot bonus, obviously. Come on! Sit there, big baby. He's hiding. The crab. Not the hermit crab, but the, sh but the horseshoe crabs, I guess. Thank you! Now I can find the cage. I got 93%! I I forgot to look inside the little pits down there, but there we go. So now you know. That's the, that's the difference between the hard level and the normal level. And if I were a more rigorous dude, <laughs> I were being paid to play this game, <laughs> I would spend a bit more time on this, but I'm not being paid to playtest this game, so I'm not going to spend much more time talking about it. Let's just go to the end of the level and see what I can find. I'm not going to be able to do the bonus level, though. So I think I needed 100% to get the bonus level on the hard level. It's not like I need any more lives or anything, right?